Welcome to Kick Scammers, the show where we look at the scammers on Kickstarter, the crooks on GoFundMe, and today we're going to be looking at one of Indiegogo's first massive failures. Yep, this is the story of the Kraos smartwatch, a smartwatch that failed in absolutely everything, and I do mean everything. The whole story has so many ups and downs that it's literally unbelievable that the thing ever got released. Yet. Here we are, one of the worst products to ever come from the world of crowdfunding is this Kraos smartwatch, a product that was absolutely panned upon release even though it gained well over a million dollars in funding. How did this happen? Is it really that bad? <laughs> it's worse. Let's do this. Hi everybody, this is DJ Slope and you're watching Indiegogo's broken smartwatch flop. Welcome to Slope's Game Room. But before going ahead, a couple of things. Firstly, my podcast is going from strength to strength. You can go and check out Slope's Cast by following the link below. And if you join my official Discord channel, you can actually ask a question for the next episode, which will go live on all major platforms. Secondly, if you're not subscribed, go and click that big red button and do that thing, making sure to click the bell and all notifications too, so that you can keep up to date with what I have going on. And finally, this video is sponsored yet again by the awesome folks over at Skillshare. Now I say yet again because this online learning platform have been sponsoring the show quite a lot this last year and if you ask me that's because all of you awesome people out there that watch this show want to do better. Go on, go and follow that link below and get yourself a whole one month free of Skillshare. If you're one of the first 1,000 people to sign up, you're going to get that very thing. For me, I've been taking a little bit of a break from social media marketing and I've decided to get creative. David Jasma has a class that teaches you how to create pixel art out of 3D objects in Blender. Rich Armstrong is teaching his followers how to make impressive GIFs and stop motion animation. And Jake Bartlett is showcasing how to animate 1930s cartoon characters similar to a certain Xbox indie game. Every time I do one of these segments for Skillshare, I discover endless amounts of classes that I had no idea exist and really grab my interest. There is literally so much to do here, and the best thing is that they can all range from only 30 minutes to a few hours so you can fit them around your schedule with chapters in each class. So come on, don't spend another night watching some reruns, actually do something productive and take any of the thousands of courses that can make you a better you. You can do it all right here at Skillshare, a service specifically curated for learning, meaning that you get no ads, a service that's always launching new classes, and best of all, it's free for the first month for the first 1,000 people to use that link below. Start exploring your creativity today. Our story starts back in June of 2013 when the Kraos smartwatch dropped. Take calls on the watch as it connects to your smartphone, connect it to all of your standard social media accounts, use it with loads of fitness apps and wearable devices with its built-in accelerometer, gyrometer and pedometer. <laughs> Pedometer. It's got seven days worth of battery, it's waterproof, you can give it commands by simply swinging your arm around. <laughs> Look how much fun they're having! Obviously all these features are pretty bog standard nowadays, but again this was, you know, 2013 and all those smartwatches were not exactly new by this point. They were definitely not as big of a deal as they eventually became, with the first generation of Apple Watches not hitting the market until 2015. Plus, these things were only $110 for early adopters and $129 for everyone else, which when converted to pounds is under a ton. That's uh, British slang for £100, guys. Lovely jubbly. Not a bad bit of kit that promises to do all of this. Plus, of course, it manages to do the very simple things of simply, you know, telling the time. 
The campaign continued to show off how impressive these little devices were with comparisons to other mainline devices. And after a crazy amount of other claims, we got to see that injection molding was actually already finished. And all that was left was the final touches of software development and of course, mass production. The first set of devices were going to be in the backers' hands by November 2013, only a few months after the completion of this campaign. And best of all, they only needed $100,000 to complete the task. Did they do it? Hell yes, they did it. They got it past that $100,000 goal and got it to... 1,502,533 dollars. Yep, 11,717 backers got it 1,502% past its goal and of course, it ended up being delayed. You see, Kraos was headed up by this guy, Steve Tan, and they had just set up a partnership with a Chinese company called View Cooper Corp, who was going to manufacture the product with Kraos doing all of the marketing. Kraos looked after the campaign page itself, got it in front of plenty of new sites' eyes, and, well, simply, it blew up. And now that all of the marketing and all of the monies have been made, all that was left to do was to finish the product, which is where View Cooper stepped in. With the success of the campaign, the two companies decided to become one, giving View Cooper equity in Kraos, and in turn giving Kraos a much cheaper run of these products, essentially giving it to them now at cost price in order to make more profit, which benefits everybody involved, aka both of the companies. As great of an idea as this was for everybody involved, it also led View Cooper to do something a little unexpected. All of the high price screens, the extra effort on the application, and practically every other component, which was supposed to be between standard and high spec for the time, ended up getting cut right down by View Cooper, and apparently they did this without the OG members of Kraos knowing about it. Or at least that's what Kraos says. Not only was View Cooper now going to be making a profit on the sales thanks to the merger, but they were once again taking a profit from Kraos as the new cost price just got lowered, even though Kraos still had to pay the same price per unit. Shh, mum's the word. But of course, this was all just going on behind the scenes, and of course, this isn't all that went wrong with the making of this Kraos watch. The team had just hired an external team in Singapore to create an e-commerce website, and it didn't get finished in time for the finale of the campaign, which of course ended up costing them a buck ton of extra sales, considering the massive success of this Indiegogo campaign had just become widespread news once again. Everybody that was reading those articles were not able to pre-order one of these watches. This resulted in that Kraos team heading down to the Philippines to go and see this e-commerce team and they did that very thing whilst all of this was going on. As the cleanup operation gets underway, footage has been released of the moment Typhoon Haiyan roared into Samar Island in the Philippines. Thankfully, no one as far as I know who was working on the website or at Kraos was harmed during this time, but regardless, due to the incomplete e-commerce website that was apparently being created by a tiny team of coders in a small cramped office somewhere in the Philippines not getting finished in time and also being full of bugs, the ties between these companies were severed and Kraos began hiring people in-house in order to work on the site on their own. Wow. Anyway, on to that first delay. According to Kraos, the reason for this was, can you believe it, subpar devices from the manufacturer. Every time one of these delays happened, according to Kraos, the startup would lose around $100,000 in refunds. And yes, looking back through the comments, you can indeed see people that did get refunds, but who knows if that figure was inflated here. And then came CES. At the show, Kraos, with View Cooper in attendance too, managed to show off 20 fully functional devices to yet even more influencers and news sites in order to get the name out. 
The problem was that one by one, they all broke, leaving only one unit working by the end of the day. In fact, whilst looking back at footage from that show, you can see people at the booth talking about the devices, but not actually demonstrating them. New tooling, more work, and endless amounts of other issues resulted in this thing getting pushed back again and again and again. And with so many more delays, of course, the backers were starting to get pretty wound up. And because of this, they started up their own Facebook group to talk amongst themselves about all of the issues that resulting with this particular campaign. And they got really wound up when they saw these pictures of the head of the company. Yep. That's our man, Steve Tan, in a Ferrari. And here's another one with Steve surrounded by crazy amounts of shopping in Italy. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. These images were posted in one of the Facebook groups that had emerged after backers had either not received their products or worse, they had received their products. Oh yes, it was at this point that backers actually did start to receive their Krayos smartwatches. Oh, and it wasn't good. The speaker and microphone on these devices that actually works sounded beyond dreadful. Um, let's see. That's what the speaker sounds like. So, let's try it again. Let's try it again. Let's do a Google search. Siri, search Apple computer. So it found Apple computer stores. <laughs> it wasn't waterproof. In fact, if you even got it slightly wet, the thing will fry and die. The pedometer is 100% useless due to the fact that it's triggered by its own vibrations, which are linked to whatever it sees in the notification tab of your phone. I mean, I understand the logic here, the smartwatch is connected to your phone and when it sees a notification it vibrates on your wrist to let you know that you've got a notification. But let's just say you've uploaded, I don't know what, 15 new pictures of your recent day out to Facebook. Because of this, the watch will then vibrate 30 times, one after another. Once to say it's uploading and once to say it's uploaded because those are the notifications it can see on your notification tab of your phone. And it gets worse. If you want to upload a video, then it will constantly vibrate for about several minutes until the upload notification is done. And yes, like I said, every single vibration is a step on the pedometer. One reviewer even claimed that the Krayos was showing that he had just done 500 steps, even though it just sat on his desk for the day, constantly vibrating with every vibration triggering a step or two. And of course, with so many vibrations going off on your wrist, the battery life didn't end up lasting seven days. In fact, it only lasted a day at best. The buttons on the phone would need to be pushed super hard and sometimes even got stuck in place. The gesture control thing, well, that literally never worked. Soft resetting the device was a common fix for bugs found by the users. However, doing so gave way to the phone often freezing completely, which would then require you to wait for it to completely drain of battery before you could charge it again and hope that it turns on. Of course, none of these things mattered for most people that got it as quite a few reports showed that the thing couldn't even link to your phone in the first place. And worst of all, out of everything I've just mentioned, the one thing you think it can do, it sadly can't. It couldn't tell the time properly. It worked for a while, but as soon as it became disconnected from your phone, a regular occurrence, that time would go all skew with, resulting in a watch that literally couldn't even do the simplest of things. Not bad for one and a half million dollars, eh? Now, as stated, it definitely looks like the majority of the issues found here can be made directly towards the View Cooper Corp side of the business. And to be fair, that's a perfectly fine judgment to come to. The problem is that everything I've just mentioned against that part of the company was reported on by Steve Tan himself. I'm not saying what he said isn't true, nor am I saying that he and his side of the business are not to blame, because they most definitely are, especially when there have been endless reports in those Facebook groups that those guys managed that the company have yet again been deleting negative feedback on their own Facebook group, as well as giving off standard copy and paste responses on the Indiegogo page to being very cryptic about all of the issues. 
It's obvious that the product is naff. It's obvious that there was drama behind the scenes, and even though you may side with the OG Kratos side of the company, there's no denying that by this point, they knew what they had on offer. And by cutting away as much negativity as possible, they were obviously trying to get new people to buy, probably the worst smartwatch on the market. They lied, or at least passed on that lie, that these things were a lot further on than they actually were. And although I will say that I don't agree with the posting of the pictures with Steve in his friend's Ferraris and the crazy amount of shopping that were all taken before this campaign even went live. Ooh, naughty, naughty. This one's on you, backers. He really doesn't help himself anyway. The guy is a self-proclaimed hardcore entrepreneur with over 20,000 Facebook followers, constantly showing that he earns tens of thousands of dollars online drop shipping products, aka being a middleman and never really holding any stock himself. He still posts pictures in Ferraris and plenty of other lush cars too, which by the looks of things he is at least claiming are his. And get this. He offers classes on how to properly research the next big product. Hi, I'm Steve Tan. I'm Evan Tan, and welcome to our private mastermind. In our mastermind, you'll learn in depth from us how we scale our Facebook ads to 360K per day in revenue. You also learn from us how we build and structure our teams in such a way so that a lot of things is systemized for you. We'll give you our step-by-step -step blueprint in which how we do product research to find your next winning product. <laughs> really? And whilst he sits in a room full of millionaires sharing ideas about what's the next big product, he has thousands of backers that never got their Kratos watch or worse, as said, did. Hey guys, Steve Tan here. So I want to share today's date, okay? So today's date is actually 31st for us, okay? So I want to share one of our today's stats. So today we did about 76,000 and yesterday is about 113,000 and this month we did about 2.6 million in sales, all right? So these are the kind of numbers we're generating for our stores and this is only just one of our stores. The reason why I want to show you guys is just to just so that you know who you're working with and who you're going to be learning from throughout this mastermind in Phuket, all right? So if you're interested, read the details below and hit me up if you're interested, okay? So I'll see you guys there. See ya. Whoever you point the finger at, the end result is still the same. When you put your face to something, you become that product. And that's probably why the website is gone. Social media pages are down. The refunds under the terms and conditions on Kraos's website when it was alive got changed to say that Indiegogo backers couldn't apply for refunds. Looks like a super successful businessman is trying to cover up possibly one of Indiegogo's biggest failures. <laughs> I wonder how many times this comes up in his master classes. Hey guys, Steve Tan here, Evan Tan here. Just finished our trip in Montreal to Shopify headquarters and we are now heading over to New York for our private mastermind. We just got our own Aventador and we just broke a private jet behind right there to get our trip to New York. So I'll see you guys there in New York and I'll see you soon. See you there. What should happen next? Well, of course, the backer should get a refund from the exotic car collecting blame shifter. However, it's a lot easier if you just sweep it all under the rug whilst you go and buy some new cars and private jets, eh? <sighs> Hey there guys, thanks for checking out the video. Why am I holding this up? Because these are the badges that I send all of the people that beat me, beat my score on Antstream. Get on over to antstream.com forward slash slopes game room. It's completely free. You can go and uh, sign up. You can go and find me as a friend, DJ Slope, and you can go up against me on the challenge, which is called Splish Splash Challenge on the game Liquid Kids. People have beaten me on Metal Slug, Elevator Action and Smash TV. If you go and find me, go and uh, go up against me. Use the link because it helps me, it helps the channel. And um, yeah, you can go up against me and you can actually try and get yourself one of these badges which I'll send you in the post. Go and check it out. 
But anyway, guys, thanks for checking out the video. As I said, um, this is the part of the video where I give a massive shout out to all of my Patreons and all of my YouTube members. With an extra big shout out going to. 8-Bit Gamer 88, Aaron Gorman, Agro Crag, Andrew Dalton, Arista, Benjamin Guy, Big Rico, Bram Perez, Cheshire One, Chris the Shapeshifter, Christopher Devero, Clan Bob, Conrad Constantine, De Action Saxon, Dalton, aka Chevmatic, Daniel Terrares, Dina, Dina81, Digsy B, Game Apologist, Gary Pinkett, Ian Quell, in Trees Gaming, Jay is Manchild, Jabba L, Aiden, James, Jeff Mianowski, Jeremy Rodriguez, Josh Gibbons, Kinglink Reviews, Lucas Oftel, Luke Georgenson, Man of God 9000, Man Shovel, mm, I've lost my place, Matt Jackson, <laughs> Michael Ridley Dash, Mike Fallon, Mind of the Unsane, Nick, uh, Nicholas Burtner, Nick Pollard, Nightwill, Over Joel Zane, Pretendo 64, Roll VP, Retro to Next Gen, aka Lou, Richard Aldergic, Rovan Army, Ryan Holt, Sabrina, uh, Stott, brand new one, thank you. Samuel Nielsen, Shades Island, Shadow Dragon, Sonic's Captor, uh, Stephen, Taylor Rainwater, That Gamer, The Cunning Linguist, Tim Labonte, Tim Lund, Todd Paul Float G, Vetus Varnus, Vike Echo, Wobbles and Bean, The Wonder Ducks, and Ye Old Hamburger. Like I said, guys, thank you all for supporting the show and allowing me to make these videos every single week. And thank you to all the people that are challenging me and getting these pin badges. Because I, I do like sending these out. It's pretty cool. It's a cool thing. But anyway, guys, I'm continuing on with Tekken, the complete history. It's a massive video and I'm well in, uh, well underway getting all that sorted. So um, I'm going to go and finish that off right now. So until next time, guys, this is DJ Slope signing out. And hopefully I'll see you all uh, next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>